All right, thanks for joining. Uh, this is the tech workshop for ArcGIS Maps for Adobe Creative Cloud. Uh, my name is Steve Moore. I'm a product engineer on the Maps for Creative Cloud team at Esri, and I'm joined today by, by Madura, who is also a product engineer on our team. So just a little bit of background about Maps for Creative Cloud and what it is. Uh, essentially, it's a free extension for Illustrator and Photoshop, and it lets you bring down spatial data from ArcGIS Online <clears throat> into Illustrator as editable vector artwork and into Photoshop as editable raster layers. And I like to start with this graphic just to kind of illustrate the different, um, sort of the wide range of, of different use cases that we can support with the Maps for Creative Cloud extension. So whether you're kind of on the far left end of this spectrum, the GIS analyst where you're spending most of your time in Esri desktop GIS software, or you're on the other end of the spectrum <clears throat> and you're a designer, and you spend most of your time in Creative Cloud applications, this extension can accommodate workflows for, for all those different types of users. Uh, in addition, there's also, you know, typically cartographers that kind of sit in the middle where they may use Esri software to get, you know, authoritative data out of their organization's GIS, <clears throat> but really they just want to bring it into Creative Cloud applications and work with it there where they're more comfortable uh, using those tools. So a little bit more about what it does. As I said, it, it gives you direct access to data-driven spatial content from ArcGIS and beyond. There's some other file-based uh, data types that are supported we'll get into later. And again, the content will be added into Illustrator as vector layers or high-resolution images into Photoshop. And another key point that uh, Maduro will actually demo in a little bit is that it can also enable sharing of map assets across your organization. So if you are on that sort of left end of the spectrum that I just showed, the GIS analyst, this gives you a way to share that authoritative content across your organization to users who may not otherwise have access to it or even know it exists. So a little bit more about Illustrator specifically. Um, basically, the three steps are you first define your map. This is where you're going to basically draw the extent that defines the area that you want to cover. The second step is to compile the map. This is where you add data, add layers, bring in web maps, do styling, things like that. And then the third and final step is sync or download the map. So we kind of use the term sync and download interchangeably. Um, you are taking a snapshot of the data and downloading it into Illustrator or Photoshop, but there is a sort of connection that's maintained back to that map in Maps for Creative Cloud. So we call it a sync as opposed to a download because there is that that connection that's persisted. And you'll notice in the screenshot, there's kind of two windows here. On the left is the map boards window. And so that's where you do the defining of, of your map. And on the right is the compilation window. And that's where you do the compiling of the map. So Photoshop, it's gonna be the same general workflow, the same three steps. The obvious difference is that the output is raster data. Uh, and also, it's important to note, you get a new raster layer with each sync or each download. And I'll demonstrate that in just a moment. So I'm going to run through a quick demo in Photoshop uh, just to give you kind of a, an idea right off the bat of what this extension can do. So I'm going to start by showing you how you can acquire and install the extension. And then we'll go through those three steps. So defining the map extent, compiling and previewing the content, and then downloading into Illustrator or in this case, Photoshop. So I'm going to start here on our product page. Um, previously, our only install option was through Adobe's Exchange, which is their third-party marketplace for extensions and applications. Um, but we now have made our own installers available for Mac and Windows. Um, and we have those on our product page. And I'll have a list of these URLs at the end of the slides. Uh, so don't worry too much about getting the URL right now. But if you go to our product page, you'll see this Download Now link or button at the top. If you click that, it just takes you down to the bottom of the page and you can download a native Windows MSI installer or a PKG file from Mac and install that way. So that's definitely our recommended install process at this point. So now I'm gonna to jump to Photoshop. So I've already got it installed and I can access it by clicking Window, Extensions, and ArcGIS Maps for Adobe Creative Cloud. So it takes me to the sign-in screen here, and I just want to briefly talk about these different account options, different sign-in options. So the complimentary account, as you probably would expect, is a complimentary or free account. Uh, you can sign up for that with just an email address. And it gives you access to some of the functionality, but not all the kind of advanced features. Uh, but if you need to do basic mapping uh, for non-commercial use, it's a really good option. 
Uh, the Plus account is a relatively new uh, account option that we, we created not too long ago. It's $10 a month and it gives you access to almost every advanced feature and it also allows for commercial use for the, uh, the, the content that comes out of the extension. So that's a you know pretty good option if you're sort of in between uh, or if you need to use um, this extension for, for commercial purposes. And then ArcGIS Online, and this is if you have an existing ArcGIS Online subscription or you want to create a new one for this extension in order to use it, uh, it's just a full-blown ArcGIS Online account. And this gives you access to all the different features in Maps for Creative Cloud. So I'm going to sign in with my ArcGIS Online subscription account. So right now it's loading up those two windows that I pointed out earlier. So I have them docked side by side here, but you can see my map boards and compilation. So first I'm going to search for Palm Springs and it takes me to the general area. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more. I'm gonna click this draw button and I'm gonna go through these steps relatively quickly. Again, the point here is just to sort of give you an idea what the workflow is and I'm going to take all the defaults we'll go into detail what those options are uh, on that that window that I got after I drew the extent um, but for now we're just going to keep it all kind of by default so now I've got my map board defined here if I click over to the compilation tab you can see I've kind of got like an ArcGIS online web map viewer type of experience I have a table of contents here on the left web map um, you know base map in this case on the right and I can come here and change the base map from the topo to any of the sort of standard Esri options. For right now, I'm just gonna leave it the way it is and I'm gonna click sync. And again, this is sync slash download and it's gonna bring this base map down into Photoshop as a single raster layer. All right, so now that that's done, I can collapse it. And pretty straightforward and basic, I've just got that one background layer right here. I can turn it off and on. I have some other scale bar information and stuff, but all the data that I have really is just that base map. But because if you recall back to one of my first slides, I said with Photoshop, every time you download, you get a new raster layer. If I come back and go to add content and add layers, and I'm going to go to the Living Atlas. We'll talk more about these different account or uh, content options here in a little while. And I'll go to Imagery. And I'll grab this USA NAEP Imagery Color Infrared Layer. And while that's drawing, I just want to point out these two icons on the left in the table of contents here. So we have a, a little eyeball icon that toggles the visibility of the layer. And then we also have this little arrow, which is a, a says toggle sync. So basically, is a toggle whether or not you want to download that layer. So by default, once you download a layer, it will turn that option off. I could turn it back on if I wanted to download the base map again. But in this case, I just want that NAPE layer that I just added. So I hit sync again. All right, if I collapse, the extension, so now I've got this nape layer on top, but you can see they're separate raster layers, so I can kind of deal with them individually. And at this point, really anything that I can do to raster data in Photoshop, I can do to these raster layers that I just downloaded. So something real simple, I can just apply a little transparency. I can see through that imagery layer now and see the topo base map underneath. So that was a quick demo, but hopefully it gives you kind of a, a you know general idea what this is for. And now we'll go into some more of the detailed workflows. So I'm just going to kind of go through each of those three steps, but in more kind of depth and detail. Um, we'll talk about some of the different options that you get uh, at each step along the way. So when you're defining your map board on the map boards window, the important thing to remember is that it is not a preview of the map that you're going to get in Illustrator. So this is just really the point in the workflow where you create and manage your different map extents, but it's not really a, you know, a preview of the final output. Um, so a few different ways you can define these. Uh, you can use an existing web map or layer. You can also use file-based data, and we'll talk about the different types that are supported in a bit. 
uh, or interactively, which is how I defined it. So I basically just drew an area on the map that covered the general extent that I wanted to, to wanted my map to cover. And these, the, the kind of important concept here, and this can get a little confusing, but it's good to keep it in, your, in the back of your mind. Um, we're sort of always working with these three parameters, extent, scale, and size. And in this case, since we're working in Illustrator, it's really page size. So we, we kind of have to jockey with these three variables. Um, so you're always going to be defining the extent one way or another. You're either going to draw it interactively or import it from an existing web map or layer. So extent is going to be defined by you. And then you really have the option of whether or not you want to define the scale or the page size. So if your map has to be at a specific scale, 1 to 50,000, you can choose to fix the scale at that value. Or if it needs to be a specific page size, you can fix the map at that specific page size. And depending on which option you pick, the extension will, will handle calculating that missing variable for you. Um, so a little bit tricky until you see it, but we'll, we'll, I think we will demo that in a little bit, but just something to keep in the back of your mind that those, those three variables are kind of always at play. So the second step, compiling the map. And this is where I obviously added that Nate player you just saw me demo in Photoshop. And the important thing here to remember is that it is a preview of the map. So it's, it's essentially a, a WYSIWYG, or what you see is what you get experience. So anything that, or however the map looks in the compilation window, that's how it should look when it's downloaded into Illustrator. So you can browse uh, a whole host of different content. You can bring in web maps and layers from ArcGIS Online. You can narrow it down to just the Living Atlas. Uh, you can search for content just within your organization. Um, you know, there's different ways that Maduro will demo um, for kind of exposing your organization's content through this extension. Uh, and then you can also directly add data, uh, file-based data that's local on your machine. So text file, CSV, shapefile, GPX, and KML. Uh, we also have a, what we call a, a geosearch uh, capability. So you can search for places by place name or city, state, things like that, and basically just add graphic points on the map. Uh, and then analysis. So we, we've recently added a handful of the analysis options that you get in ArcGIS Online. We've exposed them inside this extension. So you can do things like create buffers, do drive time analysis, and the output from those analysis operations will be added as layers in the compilation window. And lastly, download. So kind of self-explanatory. This is actually obviously where we're downloading the data, syncing it into Illustrator or Photoshop. Uh, but we kind of sort of group some other um, operations into that step, sort of some management type um, uh, you know, operations. So defining kind of the layer order, you can adjust the, the draw order of your, of your layers in the TOC, you can change to a different base map. Um, if you have uh, plus or ArcGIS Align subscription, you can change the projection, you can increase the DPI of the output. Uh, and then obviously the actual syncing itself, where we're going to be creating the document layers, either raster or vector, depending on which application you're working in. Um, and then really kind of behind the scenes, what's happening, but it is an important part of this process, is we're actually embedding all that map information in the file itself. So in the AI file in particular, you're, we're, we're, we're persisting that map um, data, really, in the AI file. And so that's kind of that link that I was talking about that connects back to the extension. So it's not just a kind of a, a flat Illustrator file. Uh, it's, it's got this map information embedded inside it. Uh, we also have a handful of optional processes that you can run after you download. So you can do things like add a legend. Um, you can add scale information if you haven't already added it, things like that. All right, so now I'm going to hand it off to Madura, and she's going to go through a more detailed demo in Illustrator. So we're going to get started here on a demo on to see how the extension works in Illustrator. Uh, now, just a quick reminder is the um, we the workflow that you saw that Steve just talked about is similar for Photoshop and Illustrator, but we're going to focus mainly on the Illustrator workflow in this demo. I'm going to start by changing hats a little bit. Instead of an Illustrator user, I'm going to um, uh, we're going to do a scenario where uh, we already have uh, ArcGIS Online, and we're we're using the ArcGIS Online organization. And I have to share some content with um, maybe graphic designers that I work with, 
or um, communication specialists. So as an ArcGIS Online user, I already have data that I have hosted. And I'm going to show you first how to set up your ArcGIS Online organization and share that data out with your graphic design community. So we're going to start off by uh, signing into ArcGIS Online as an administrator. So you can see I'm already logged in here as an administrator. Now, a few simple steps will enable you to share your data easily with your design community. The first thing you need to do is share the content to a group. Here, I have a group called Analytics. I'm already in the groups page, and I'm looking at a group called Analytics. And I've already added some data in here. I have feature layers, I have web maps, and I have other layers in this group. To enable this group for use in the extension, I have to, first of all, add the members who need access to this data to this group, add the members to this group, and also add a tag. And the tag is simply M4CC, Maps for Creative Cloud. You click Save. And this simple change to your group will now make your ArcGIS online group accessible within the extension. And let's see how that works. So now I'm going to switch gears again. I am now in Adobe Illustrator. I'm a graphic designer who needs to use some content that's hosted by my organization. So my uh, GIS admin has already given me an ArcGIS online um, ID, so I can use that to sign in. Now, once the extension signs in, we'll have access to the same map boards and compilation window that Steve was explaining. And just like we did in Photoshop, you can now start defining your map. But you'll notice that when you try to now import content from uh, using the extension in your organization, all the groups that were shared with you through that M4CC tag are now available, including that analytics group that I just shared a few minutes ago. Let's come back to this in a minute. Let's first start exploring what it means to define a map board. So just quickly going to show you a few things you can do in this map boards window. Uh, the first thing I want to point out is um, uh, that this map boards window is an interactive window. You can zoom in, out, you can sorry, pan the map, or you can even search for a location. So let me search for Los Angeles here and zoom into the Los Angeles area. So I'm zooming into a neighborhood here in Los Angeles and then get to an area that I want to define a map, get close to some place. Now you can use the draw tool to draw a map. Now, as you remember, we talked about how the extension can help you determine the right scale and extend for the page size that you want to uh, make a map over. So let's say you're making this map to be a part of some sort of marketing collateral and you have a fixed size. You can define that size here in the width and height box of this map boards option. And that's the size that will be fixed for this specific map board. You can also choose to use one of the existing Illustrator presets. So let's say here I want to create a tabloid size map. I'll make it landscape uh, and I'll click OK. So this roughly shows me the area that's covered for that tabloid size map in this map board extent. Now, when I adjust this map board, 
you'll notice up here in the toolbar that the scale of the map board is adjusted, but the page size remains fixed because that's what we defined when we were defining the map board. You, if you want to keep this level of detail or this scale, you can easily switch the setting to, to maintain that level of detail. And then when you make any adjustments to the map board, you'll see now that the extension now knows that you want to keep the scale fixed. So it's now adjusting the size of the map board area. So this is where we know that the map area, the scale and extent are the map board size are closely related to each other. And changing this, the extension can calculate what needs to adjust to meet your new criteria. So now I'm changing the extent and it knows it needs to change the dimensions to fit that map area. So that's a little bit about how you can use the map board um, options, this dialog, and also the toolbar to understand what changes are happening. I kind of also want to show you real quick here that these ma this map board and compilation panels are just like any other panel in Illustrator. So now as a graphic designer, I kind of want to arrange my Illustrator workspace and I can dock these panels together side by side or two other panels in Illustrator and treat them as other Illustrator panels. Now let's uh, look at the next workflow for defining a map board. We just we just uh, drew, created a map board interactively by drawing it. But now we can also, now that I'm signed in with an ArcGIS Online ID, I can also create a map board by importing data from an existing layer. So when we started the demo, we shared an, a group that had some analytic data in it. I can now here, I can choose to browse um, as, as we mentioned earlier, there are many data sources to browse from. You have access to this uh, Maps for Creative Cloud group, which is a special group maintained by our team. It, in, it includes uh, data sets that are uh, great for different kinds of mapping. Uh, Natural Earth is a very popular data set that's used for mapping. Maybe if you're making a map over a country scale or something like that. We also have access to OpenStreetMap data, which you can use for mapping cities and neighborhoods and uh, block, block areas. Uh, there's also other data available that's a part of the ArcGIS Online data repository. So this is a special group of data that's under Maps for Creative Cloud. You'll also notice that in here, there is some um, vector layers that are useful, especially things like the vector street map, especially if you're going to make a lot of uh, style changes to the data in Illustrator after downloading uh, a layer such as the vector street map will be really useful. Now this, this layer covers the entire globe. Um, and there's other regional data available through other data sources as well. In addition to the Maps for Creative Cloud, you also have access to the Living Atlas uh, data set that's hosted in ArcGIS Online and ArcGIS Online, the entire repository. You can use the search feature to search for specific uh, layers. So let's say I'm looking for some cultural data. You can just type keywords and look at what's available. Change your browse location to something else if you want to search in a different repository. You can also filter this data to show you just the vector content or raster content or both. For this next example, I'm actually going to use a layer that was shared with me by my organization under this analytics group. So here there is a layer called US Census Population and I can quickly click the Add button. When I'm importing a map, there are two things that happen. One is the, the map board gets automatically created based on the extent of the layer or a web map. In addition to that, that layer also gets added 
in the uh, compilation window. So it, it's kind of two in one. You can still continue to do the same things. You can continue to fine tune your map area, zoom in and out, move the map board, and you can see the details changing in the compilation window. So here I'll set this map again to an area that I want to make a map over. So I want to make a map over the um, Los Angeles International Airport. And I'm going to make a map using some census demographic data. Now that I've defined my mapping area, the next um, set of actions that I will do is here in the compilation window. And the compilation window is where you actually compile your map. This is where you can add content, you can create content, you can set mapping properties. So let's look at first how to uh, change some of the appearance of this data that's already added. Just a quick reminder that the appearance changes that you will make in the compilation window are not the kind of uh, illustrator design uh, or aesthetics that you will do here in the extension. In the extension, you have the benefit of um, accessing the attributes that are um, underlying in the data set. So you can use those attributes to drive the appearance. If you hover over these three dots next to a layer name, you see a bunch of options that are available for that layer. One of the options is to change style. This is where you can change the appearance of your existing layer based on a different attribute. So here, let's say I want to, instead of the population class, I want to symbolize this data based on the house units. You can choose a certain type of appearance as well. Click OK. You can also do things like add labels. We'll see that in the next example. Another thing you can do is also add additional content. And just to quickly show you is that you can add layers and web map content, overwrite this map with a different map, also through the compilation window. The difference between the compilation window and the uh, map boards window is, although the interface is more or less the same, when you're adding content in the compilation window, you're making change to this map board. On the other hand, when you're importing content in the uh, map boards window, you're actually creating a new map board. So just be mindful of that. So here, instead of adding a layer or a map, I'm going to choose to add places. And this is a nice way to look for locations based on either a description or an address for that location. So in this example, let's say I just want to add a few hospitals maybe in this area. You can search for hospitals and you can see it, it finds all the hospitals in this area. Now you can hover over it to see where those hospitals are. Make sure we're seeing the entire map board. Let's do this again. So you can see up on this up upper right corner, you can see that there's a pin that shows you that this hospital is in this area. So this is what allows you to, uh, you know, individually choose what what places you want to add. You can also add all of them to a layer that will be created. So here for this example, I'm just going to choose to add all. And now I have all the hospitals added in here under this layer called hospitals. You can also do additional things in the compilation window like do some sort of analysis. Now there are a few analysis tools that were recently added to the extension. Visualize route that lets you connect points using our routing technology. Also you can create geographic offsets which is like a buffer Visualize tri travel times allows you to uh, visualize drive time or walk time areas. And in addition to that, you can also do analysis based on 
the demographic data set that Esri hosts. For this example, I'm going to create some buffers around these hospitals. So let's say I want to create one and two mile buffers around these rings around this hospital. And click apply. This is actually using the power of GIS, but remember right now I'm in here as a designer and I'm, I'm able to run some of these analytics in Illustrator itself. You should be mindful if you're using an ArcGIS online organizational account, it does follow your existing uh, ArcGIS online organization credit consumption model. So the same thing is happening here. Once the analysis is complete, the new features are added as, as a different layer. Now you can also, in the compilation window, choose an appropriate base map for your final design. So under, let me turn these layers off and we can see that under this base map, select base map option, you have access to a few different base maps. The top two are the vector base, map, base, base maps available in the extension, the vector street map and natural earth. Now, the rest of them, which are indicated by these grid-like symbols, are raster-based base maps. What that means is, as an Illustrator user, if you want to have design control on the appearance of the different um, um, components in the base map, then you may want to choose something like the vector-based base map. Okay. okay, maybe the network connection is not working for me right now. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and download this map. And the download is actually going to um, create a Illustrator file using the content in this map board. Okay, so because I'm having some network troubles here, I'm going to open a map board that I previously downloaded. So the download essentially creates a file like this. The content will match the content that was added to your compilation window. And all the layers will be organized in the same way that was in your compilation. The difference is since now we're in Illustrator, all of these all of these um, all of these layers can now be controlled. You can turn things on or off. So here I, I can turn off labels. You can also change the order of layers if you choose to do so. All of this being vector content, you can easily manipulate it in Illustrator using standard Illustrator editing tools. Okay, so I quickly want to summarize what we did in the extension is we use the map boards window to define a map board. And then in the compilation window, we added some data, we added the hospital points, and also we created buffers, and we then downloaded the whole map as an Illustrator file. And now that it's an Illustrator, I can choose things and add, add features, add add styles to this Illustrator file if I want to. So just doing simple changes like that. Um, you can choose to do individual style changes by selecting groups of features or layers altogether, 
or you can also use the extension to do some automated style changes. So one of the things I want to kind of quickly talk, talk about over here is In the extension, you also have accesses, access to this uh, processes window. Okay. Now, this processes window allows you to automatically apply some of your Illustrator assets. As you can see, you can apply your own Illustrator symbol. So let's say you have a symbol library with your own custom symbols. Instead of these purple points, you have your own symbol for uh, for applying to for these hospitals. You can do so by running this tool. Now I would refer you to our YouTube playlist and I'll show you a link later where you can get access to our YouTube playlist which has some really good demonstrations on how you can apply your own assets to a downloaded file. Now I want to switch gears again and keep moving along. So here also the something else that we've been working on that we're excited to um, we're excited to share with you is the next release in the next release of ArcGIS Maps for Adobe we are also adding the ability to integrate with ArcGIS Pro. At ArcGIS Pro version 2.5, a new export type was, was released called the AIX exporter, which is the Adobe Illustrator exchange file which which works with the ArcGIS Maps for Adobe extension in Illustrator to create an Illustrator file. So you can now author a map in ArcGIS Pro or a layout in ArcGIS Pro and export it out as an Illustrate as an AIX file and then use the extension to convert it into a .ai file. Now, let's take a look at that. So now I'm switching gears again. Now I'm in ArcGIS Pro and I have authored this map using the cartography tools available in ArcGIS Pro. I've added data from multiple sources, including some from online and some from a local geodatabase that I have content in. I'm also using features such as on this layer, I've applied some definition queries so that only a subset of those features are visible. I'm using some labeling um, properties to label some of the features on this map. And I have used, um, so this is how I've made this map. I've added a bunch of layers, definition queries, labels. I've also used this map to prepare a layout. The layout is pretty simple, but I've been requested to share this map with my communications team so they can use it in one of the brochures that they're designing. But they want this map in a format that they can use in Illustrator. Now, I have ArcGIS Pro version 2.5, so I can go to the export tab and you know that there's a new workflow for exporting. When you click share and export, you have this export pane that is available to you. And you can see that in addition to the other exporters, you also have this new export type, which is called a .aix. So you can give it a name. And the rest of the properties are similar, like other export options you're already familiar with as a pro user. Click export. Now, once the export is complete, this is just a file that is created at my exported location. So I can go to that location. Now to use it with Adobe Illustrator, you need to have 
the beta version. Let me just switch back to the slides over here. So this functionality is available in beta form right now in the extension. You can get this beta 2.0 beta from the Esri early adopter community. All you need to do is uh, you should be able to create an account with the Esri early, early adopter community. So if you have the latest ArcGIS Pro version and if you have ArcGIS maps for Adobe 2.0 beta, then when you are an illustrator with the extension installed, when you click on file open, you will now see a new export type called Adobe Illustrator Exchange. Now you can change your browse to the location where you created that AIX file, select the AIX file and click open. Here the extension converts that AIX file into a layered Illustrator file that you can now use for, again, your graphic design workflows. So the designer can now use this file and they don't, they don't have to spend time uh, clearing things up, but the, the, the file is, in an arranged, um, is arranged in uh, a layer form where they can, if they want to change the appearance, they can quickly select a layer and apply their changes. So here maybe I can apply some sort of a outer glow. And then change the appearance of this file so I can use it in brochures. So that's the new thing that we're working towards and it's available as beta. Continuing on, on that that theme, some of the other things that we will work on as we uh, as we continue this uh, the work on this extension is uh, support for portal that should come uh, that should come soon as well. Another thing that we're working on is an extension for Adobe XD. Now, if you're not already familiar, Adobe X XD is Adobe's prototyping tool. So as a developer or a use UI UX designer, if you need to design prototypes for web applications or mobile applications that require a map to be a part of your design, then you can use an extension that we're hopefully going to um, have available pretty soon to do your design workflows. So that's all that I had for you and we thank you for we thank you for your attention and I just want to share some resources with you to continue uh, exploring the ArcGIS maps for Adobe extension. So here is a link to our beta site that I've referred to which has the uh, ability to integrate with ArcGIS Pro. If you want to just download the current version of the extension, you can download it from our product page, which is available here. We have a few YouTube videos and we regularly update them with new functionality or changes that we make to the extension. So, so keep, a, keep an eye out for any new videos that we might release. We also encourage you to ask questions and uh, engage with us through our GeoNet site. So this is a link to our GeoNet. In addition to that, you can also refer to our uh, documentation and look at some samples and case studies on our social media pages. So that's it. Thank you for your time.